Hello, bonjour, hola, namaste. Thank you everyone for joining on the webinar. I'm really glad that all of you could make it to the webinar. Today, our focus of the webinar is going to be the impact of environment on the COVID-19 spread and how we can use technology to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Along with that, of course, the presenter is also going to share in depth about OISO, its offerings, solutions, and various applications that we work upon. I would like to, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce my colleague, Ayan Karmakar, who comes from a core environmental domain to share in depth about the webinar and take this forward. Over to you, Ayan. Thank you, Jainam. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I'm a presenter today. My name is Ayan Karmakar, and thank you for the introduction. I do come from a core environmental engineering background. So today's webinar is uh, focused upon sensor-based monitoring and how this technology can be used in mitigating the spread of COVID-19. Just a couple of instructions before we begin with our today's proceedings. For any questions, feel free to write them down in the chat box. So let's begin with uh, a little intro about OISOM. I know most of our audience today are our allies and we have known each other for quite some time. We have done some business together. However, for the ones uh, who are joining with us for the first time, I wish to spare a few minutes to make them aware about our products and solutions. So what is OISOM? You see, OISOM is an environmental IoT company offering data-driven environmental solutions for better decision making. Using our sensor-based hardware, we monitor various environmental parameters related to air quality, noise, odor, weather, and radiation. We have a global presence in across 10 countries like India, UK, Netherlands, Australia, and South America. Our vision is to empower industries with data-driven solutions for better decision-making while keeping environment at our core. And we aim to implement our environmental liability solutions to 50 major cities by 2020. We are an ISO 9001 and 14001 certified company. We are in the part of uh, the Make in India campaign as our products are manufactured at our Ahmedabad facility in Gujarat. And our products are certified by C, FCC, ROHS, PTCRB, and SASO. So the question that comes up is, why are we concerned about environment and air quality? Well, as a shocking fact, pollution is the fifth largest killer responsible for more than 4.2 million deaths worldwide. Of course, this data is uh, the pre-COVID-19 uh, era. But coming back to the air pollution, you know, 1.2 million deaths happen in India itself, where nine out of 10 people breathe polluted air, which reduces four years from their lifespan. Well, you won't believe, but air pollution kills three times more people, more than even AIDS, TB, and malaria combined. So now my question is, what is stopping us to get deeper into this problem and solve it? I would say data. Yes, so data is the key to understand any complex problem. And today, there is a huge data vacuum when it comes to environmental data, because Present solutions may be expensive, complicated, and a little labor intensive. So we developed a simple, cost-effective, and highly scalable solution for environmental data monitoring and analytics. The system is capable to monitor more than 30 different parameters, and the data is transmitted to our data analytics platform. These 30 parameters are mainly segmented into dust, gases, odorants, noise, radiation, and weather. Now, the data platform has features like actionable alerts, insightful reports, and predictive analytics. These alerts can also be integrated to automate various industrial systems. Further, this data can be published on an LED display, a TV, or a web platform. Now, our sensor-based CAQMS can measure more than 30 parameters, which include dust particulates like PM1, 2.5, 10, and 100, Gases like SOX, NOx, carbon monoxide, oxygen, ozone, carbon dioxide, some odorants like uh, hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, chlorine, formaldehyde, volatile organic compounds, and mercaptans. Some weather parameters like wind speed, wind direction, rainfall, fog, light intensity, temperature, humidity, and pressure. The noise levels and radiations like ultraviolet, infrared, and so on. Now, most of the gas sensors work on the principle of electrochemical sensing. You see, electrochemical sensors, they work by reacting to the target gas, generating an electrical output, which varies with the amount of target gas present. A few gaseous parameters work on the principle of NDIR, that is non-dispersive infrared, where each constituent gas is a sample and will absorb some infrared at a particular frequency. 
So most odorants are measured using the PID sensor, where a photoionization detector is used to detect the positive and negative ions. And the dust particulates are measured using the laser scattering principle. Also, our device is communication agnostic. So apart from GSM, Ethernet, and Wi-Fi, which most of the devices are connected to, our device can also communicate using Modbus, LoRa, and NB-IoT protocols. I'll just show you a short video, which is aimed to get a little better clarity. Here is a state-of-the-art environmental monitoring solution by Oizo. It's a compact, ultra-low-powered system which can work fully on solar power. It works continuously and sends various environmental data related to air pollution, odor, weather, noise, and radiation. Its patent pending e breathing technology makes it highly accurate compared to industry standards. It can do complete gas analysis by monitoring pollutants like carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, sulfides, ozone, ammonia, hydrocarbons, and many more. It counts every single particle present in the air sample using a highly accurate laser beam. It is capable of monitoring particulates of various sizes, ranging from 1 micron to 100 microns. The downward facing class 1 noise sensor is ideally positioned to capture environmental noise up to 140 decibels from various sources. As you can observe, the top mounted pyranometer does solar radiation analysis by diffracting the light rays into UV, IR, and visible light spectrum. Most of the pollutants are invisible, but through systematic data collection, they can be made visible. OISO is committed to decipher hyperlocal environmental data and redefine the natural resources, which are highly essential for our existence on Earth. So, what sets us apart and puts us ahead in the market, you may ask. You see, our products are empowered with salient features like real-time data transfer, an all-weather proof enclosure with IP63 certification, theft resistant, tamper or vandalism proof, fully compatible with solar power, and it has more than eight different modes of communication, also with a battery backup, which lasts up to 72 hours. Now, uh, our flagship products are ambient air pollution monitoring system, that is the Polydron, the ambient odor analyzer, that's Odosense, ambient dust monitor, the Dustroid, and automatic weather station, that's Weathercom. Now, all these flagship products are connected to our OISOM IoT data platform. And this data is available in the form of data visualization, analytics, and environmental modeling using software platforms. So, in a span of just four years, we are present in more than 300 locations, monitoring the data that affects over 10 million people in around 10 global cities and across 10 countries. You know, we are promoting six types of solutions using all the hardware and software products that we explained. We have implemented solutions for several applications, but at the moment, we are primarily promoting these six solutions. Three are in the urban category, which are related to smart city and campus, airports and road safety. Whereas three are in the industrial category, which are related to dust separation, solid waste, and wastewater treatment. Now, our partner first approach makes the application either B2B2B or B2B2G. So now that I've shared a little bit about, about Oizong, I mean, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, we're talking about the deadly coronavirus. By now, I'm sure we have a pretty fair idea about what we were trying to tell you about the sensor-based technology for monitoring the environmental condition. So when it comes to monitoring air pollution, in the current scenario, there has been an interesting observation regarding the COVID-19 spread. So before proceeding to the correlations, let us understand what we know so far about this deadly virus. Uh, we have all been following this news related to COVID-19 and how it has impacted our daily lives, be it the mortality rate, the lack of testing, or the effects of the lockdown on the economy. You know, we are all well informed about this various uh, sources. Now, not all is gloomy, you know, when it comes to the after effects of this pandemic. Now, these are a few, few positives that I would like to showcase, which have surfaced during these hard times. A noticeable impact in the air pollution has been observed by scientists across the world. Moreover, as we mentioned in the introductory slides, you may recall the number of people dying due to the poor air quality. You know, as a blessing in disguise, the COVID-19 containment strategies, which involve travel bans and mass gatherings, now these result in the reduction of air pollution, eventually reducing those number of deaths. For example, scientists have found out that 
China alone has found to save more than 77,000 lives as a result of this phenomenon. So just to give you a little uh, idea about the size of the coronavirus and the particulate matter, you see the size is around 0.1 microns, which is way less than the detection level of particulate matters in the form of say PM1 or 2.5 or 10. So this indicates that the virus can easily penetrate through the masks that are used to contain PM2.5. Now, you know, just imagine, you know, imagine if the coronavirus would have been airborne or what kind, what kind of catastrophic damage it could have created. Well, just hold your imagination for some time before you come to any judgment. Now, let us discuss certain findings of this virus. You see, the COVID-19 spreads mainly by droplets produced as a result of coughing or sneezing of a COVID-19 infected person. Now, this happens in two ways. One is a direct close contact and another is an indirect contact. And you know the incubation period is somewhere between 1 to 14 days. Now, some people with infection but without any serious symptoms can also spread the disease. We also know that the prevention techniques which we talk about like social distancing and ensuring that our, we take care of the hygiene and the statistics show a very concerning picture. The mortality rate is quite high as say around 10 percent at the world level or even if you talk about India it's around 3 percent and the most affected country so far has been the US when it comes to the cases concerned. But today the world has seen more than 4 million cases with around 3 lakh deaths. You see, all I'm trying to say is that we are in a grave situation. Now, there have been some of the findings uh, where a very famous professor, Leonardo Seti from the University of uh, Bologna, he has come up with uh, a correlation between the PM, SARS, and how the clusters have found out the outdoor PM correlation with the virus. Another such uh, study at Harvard University has found out, and they stated that you know if Manhattan had lower its average particulate matter level, by just one unit that's one microgram per meter uh, cubic meter over the past 20 years so they have tried a correlation and they found out that there could be 248 deaths lower than what is it is right now here you know there's a documentary which shows how some of the uh, organizations are working you see this is from nhk japan where they're trying to identify with laser beams and high sensitivity camera and see the spread of uh, these droplets when a person is talking or he's uh, coughing or breathing. So this is what they have found out with the uh, micro droplets. So there are some small and light uh, particles which keep on drifting through the air, even when you talk, even when you sneeze, or even when you cough or you're in a closed confined area. And they have taken this uh, study to a next level where they have contained uh, around 10 people in a small room and they've come up with some simulations. If you see that there's a timer on the left corner of the screen where they're trying to say how much time it takes for lighter particles to you know stay in the air as well as the heavier particles which are say more than suppose 10 microns or 100 microns to fall off so if you see that as the micron or the particles that are falling off and you see related with the seconds that are mentioned it's quite quick whereas there are some lighter particles which stay in the air for an indefinite period and this can sway away from, say, you know, ventilation through opening up the windows and all such methods. So this is kind of a simulation which is, which is talking about what the droplets are and how the spread can be in, inside a confined area. Now, there has been a study on the human expired aerosols. You see, those human expired aerosols are in the form of droplets that have resulted from human activities like, you know, coughing, breathing, or even talking, as I was just mentioned. So there have been some studies which have suggested that such aerosols are found in hospitals where the COVID-19 patients are admitted. Now these aerosols remain on surfaces for hours before they finally fall on the floor. However, such aerosols are heavier and then they take time to deposit on the floor. Particles of diameter of say one to three microns were found to be suspended for almost indefinitely. As you can recall in the simulations, the ones they were staying on the top or in the air, they were lighter particles. Whereas particle sizes more than 100 microns, they fell off uh, in, in just 10 seconds. So this slide will give you a little better idea of how when we meet the human expired aerosol and the particulate matter, is there a possibility of the spread on the particulate matter? So the sizes of the virus and PM2.5 and PM10 are on your screen and this can easily deposit or can 
take over the layers of those particles and then can contain on uh, the virus spread. I'll just have a quick engagement session here. I'll ask you to fill up a poll. So you guys can please uh, answer the poll and uh, let us know what you feel about uh, this, this uh, question. We'll be a sh quick short poll when you can just select any one of the answers and we can have a quick engagement session here. Yes. So now there are some correlations which have established between uh, the long term exposure and the mortality rates in uh, the United States. You see Harvard University, as I was explaining earlier, they saw that an increase in the PM 2.5 values by one microgram per cubic meter led to 15% increase in deaths. And we just discussed the death rate. It's simple mathematics to you know, gauge what could it reflect. Similarly, Italian scientists have found out that correlations between high mortality rates and the pollution hotspots, they've considered it to be a cofactor, whereas some Italian scientists have correlated the particulate matter in the 10 micron size. Another study in London says that, you know, exposure to uh, nitrogen dioxide and ozone for long term due to the vehicular uh, pollution, they have created a persistent inflammatory damage. And this increases the risk of the infection because you know the virus attacks your respiratory tract so now just you know what do we understand from all this that there is a clear evidence to back the fact that the virus can be spread by particulate matters in fact these correlations have been identified we see more stress on identifying pollution hotspots also you know we can connect the data with the health data and a historic data of how people have been exposed to these high polluting factors so now I will just ask you to just go back a few minutes, recall what I told you to hold your imagination and request you to continue with your imagination. Now this time, include all these facts and just try to imagine if the virus can be spread in the air via this particulate matter, how much, you know, the, the event can be catastrophic. So there are a lot of research articles which claim all these lengths, you know, the findings may be preliminary, but definitely leaves us the question of its detrimental impact. Now, all this said, you may ask, you know, how can we track or identify these hotspots? Look, is there a mechanism which helps us take preventive action? Look, to answer that, I would seek your prime attention for the next few minutes. You know, at this moment, I would also uh, request you to drop your questions and queries wherever you find out you're not able to uh, get the fact, we will be happy to answer. Use the chat box. So moving on to the next slide, which is the prime one in, in this webinar. You see, this is this is the offerings uh, on the environmental AI. So the AI is a street by street uh, pollution mapping and source detection platform for the cities. Now, a map is always a very good medium to determine a region specific spread of any matter, be it the air pollution or the virus. So here we have combined the data of the detected cases of the COVID-19 and superimposed it over a pollution heat map. Now this went further correlated with the upwind and the downwind data, which helps us understand the possible spread over a specific region, in this case, a hotspot or a city. We have these maps across where we have identified these hotspots based on the detected cases. What we're trying to correlate is identifying those hotspots where uh, the pollution is high in terms of, let's say, particulate matter, 2.5 or 10. Now let me give you a little brief on how we use this technology when it comes to the air monitoring network. The environmental AI is a street by street pollution mapping, as I was just mentioning, and the source detection platform for cities. Now, uh, in this uh, area, we try to correlate data from different sources, uh, from uh, source apportionment in studies uh, where you know they take the historical data. Unlike that, this uh, uh, this map will give you a real-time data monitoring, and every hour you can have a sense of what is going around. So if you see the picture, there are some data from the fire, there are some data from construction activities, there are some data from the industries. So all these can be mapped in a 100 by 100 resolution, which will then uh, give an actionable insight for the authorities or any stakeholders to take actions upon. So this makes the whole process of understanding the hotspots and then identifying and then eventually take actions very efficient. So this is what you know, environmental AI is all about. Feel free to ask questions about it. We'll be more than happy to discuss more uh, about this platform separately. So 
All this is possible when there is a robust network to monitor the pollutants. So let me walk you through with some of our product offerings, which will ensure the same. Now, this is Pollutron, which has the capability of measuring particulate matter that is PM10 and 2.5. Uh, also, other parameters like carbon monoxide, NO, NO2, SO2, and ozone, they're also measured in this Pollutron. In addition to this, there is light intensity, noise, and weather parameters. And let's quickly have a different uh, look of the versions that we offer with this, and also understand how this, uh, this Pollutron works. So here are certain uh, variations that we pro provide where light is the basic version where PM 2.5, 10, temperature, humidity, these are all uh, measured in this uh, along with carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide gases. And this is recommended mostly for the general research purposes. Now the smart version includes all the AQI measuring gases concerning the ambient air quality and it's recommended for extensive purposes like city monitoring. Whereas the pro version includes parameters related to critical applications like PM1 and H2S and is suggested for usage in the critical applications. Unlike uh, others, and we have a holistic solution where we also offer options and accessories in terms of wind speed direction, rainfall. So that gives a very holistic uh, view of any city or any campus that you're trying to measure along with the pollution data as well as these uh, meteorological data. Uh, today, you know, smart city has become one of the core uh, areas of urban development. So, Ozone's Polydon has been monitoring data of almost 11 such smart cities. Besides this, the Polydon has also been used for monitoring data of campuses to improve the overall quality of air, the residents breathe. Some critical applications like uh, roadside and tunnel monitoring have also surfaced with the availability of such low cost pollution monitors. Now, even airports have had initiatives for monitoring emissions by airplanes and their effects on the travelers. Another such product is Dustroid. You know, we all often see these uh, dust laden activities going around us, especially in a country like India, where, you know, dust is a very pertinent issue. So activities such as mining and construction lead to spiking con uh, the concentration of particulates in the air. So Ozom's ambient dust profiler measures these concentration and works on active sampling method using a highly accurate laser beam. Also for the measurement of particulate matter, we dehumidify the sample to nullify the effect on humidity uh, on the measurement. So as Polydron, we also have variants in Destroyed. So the pro version is uh, specifically designed for highly critical applications like industries, mining and construction. Whereas the light version is ideal for urban monitoring. Others uh, like the Polydron and all our offerings, this is also a very holistic uh, um, the product where wind speed and wind direction helps you understand the the flow of the air and you can you know use it for modeling uh, using some software platforms threshold limits can be set for construction and mining activities and destroyed becomes instrumental in governing such database decisions now apart from known sources in construction and mines there are quarries and seaports which are also prone to heavy dust laden activities so the data gathered from destroyed can help automate mist cannon and which is used for dust separation even for seaports, timely action can be taken by the authorities to curb the dust, influenced by loading and unloading and other harbor activities. So all said, we have now understood that, okay, there is there's a map which can help us understand and identify these hotspots. There are the mountain network using these sensor-based systems, which can help you, you know, understand uh, the, the pollution levels across a particular city. So how do we make sense of all this? So it gives me immense pleasure right now, guys, to share with you that we are already developing an index that we've been working for quite some time. So including, including the holistic view, we have come up with an index which provides actionable insights to the stakeholders. You know, despite Corona being a non-airborne spread, we may say it's airborne effects through particulate uh, needs to be quantified at some point. So this is the airborne COVID spread index, which we're trying to work upon, which includes uh, particulate matter concentration, the wind speed and direction, you know, the detected uh, cases in a specific region that we're talking about and the historical air pollution data, which if you can relate to the earlier findings from the scientists, which they have found that long term exposure can be a very, very key factor to this. But we are also open to collaborate with uh, concerned people and uh, research bodies so we can help and we can, you know, uh, make this whole index very useful for the stakeholders to take any any actions based on this. This is another section that we're talking about. We, we spoke about how you know air is uh, being a concern of it. Let me also take you some time to focus upon how you know water systems are also getting affected. So there are certain studies that have come up, they've emerged. 
the uh, the cpcb the governing body in india has also uh, you know cautioned the operation and maintenance workers in the sewage treatment plants that you know there are some traces that are found uh, in the sewage systems and in the paris water body they have been they found some minuscule traces in the non potable water so we are also finding uh, there are some findings in the water systems maybe not in the pure or the drinking water systems but also in in the ones which are in non non potable uses they're finding these traces which can also be you know which are alerting us at certain levels so the municipal wastewater can be an indication of the covid spread you know as we find traces of the virus in these sewer system it becomes an aid to identify any asymptomatic patients in the region so identifying such hotspots based on the data of virus trace can be useful to increase these testing frequency region wise so i'll just take a quick poll here and i would like to uh, you to answer this uh, uh, poll to have an understanding of did, whether you knew about uh, uh, this findings or not and uh, while we talk about uh, the sewage systems and the treatment plants you know let me also showcase some solution uh, where we are working upon in in the, in the water systems i'll just give a few seconds for you to finish the poll yeah so this is something that we have worked about where uh, if you see closely in the map uh the the corona virus uh, spread can be identified during the hotspot which i was just trying to tell you and then we identify these hotspots based on that and we can alert the medical system and the workers there to increase the frequency of testing there so this this can be a very robust method uh, to help uh, the workers in this so as i was saying since uh, we are actively working uh, in the uh, water and the wastewater system this is one product offering that we have which is odosense Uh, we we do seldom uh, you know smell odors in our surrounding and we fail to trace its sources and majorly you know we tend to ignore that and move on with our lives and in the process we fail to understand the gravity of the situation so our odor monitoring solution odosense help tracks harmful gases which are toxic and create an uncomfortable surrounding you know process improvements have also surfaced as a novel application while quantifying such odorful gases just like our other offerings we also have bifurcated uh, these variants so with the light version methane gases such as ammonia or hydrogen sulfide is used and this is well suited for applications pertaining to wastewater treatment plants while solid waste landfills may be equipped with the smart version and the most advanced version that is pro uh, which also measures formaldehyde and chlorine is used for industrial applications again this is also a very uh, holistic uh, view that we believe in and we offer measuring wind speed and direction uh, to assist for source tracking of these odors a major source that we find is from the landfills so if you i can just ask you to relate to when you are crossing any solid waste dump yard and we are pushed to this discomfort for some seconds because we smell several kind of odor you know also some performing uh, underperforming uh, sewage treatment plants and effluent treatment plants they tend to release unwanted odors in the, in the air leading to harmful atmospheric conditions for the residents nearby so this when combined with the industrial odors form a dangerous combination you know sometimes leading to fa fatality and odor monitoring in these cases proved to be an excellent assessment and helps in taking corrective actions so we have spoken about uh, the impacts of coronavirus and you know this has been a hot topic these days and obviously understandable because of the short and the long term impacts this has had but this has also led to forget some of the major issues which have we have been concerned uh, you know globally and amongst them is climate change this is a statement made by the secretary general of the united nations which says that a worse enemy still prevails and the efforts to cur curtail that need not be compromised at any given times and climate change is a bigger threat than coronavirus you see the evident climate change has affected millions and it will continue to do so unless we take some timely and necessary actions now as we've already have the capability to monitor the greenhouse gases like methane and carbon dioxide which are responsible for the global warming in addition to this we also offer monitors to detect and possibly alarm any natural disasters so our uh, solution offering which is weathercom which is a weather monitoring uh, solution becomes a crucial aspect to avoid any natural hazards and untimely weather calamities the plug and play weather monitoring solution becomes an ideal choice for comprehensive meteorological monitoring due to its robust build its solar compatibility and advanced analytics as with our offerings uh, we have bifurcated weathercom 
the smart variant is speci uh, specially designed for agricultural monitoring where we also measure, measure soil humidity along with rainfall and this not only helps the efficient farming but also triggers database signals for smart irrigation for safety applications like uh, road safety which includes visibility the pro version turns out to be an ideal solution data from the weathercom will be helpful to take preventive actions during calamities as well as forecasting events now along with precision agriculture it will help in taking data driven decisions to save the crops also visibility becomes a key these days so we are talking about agriculture and then we are also talking about the road safety so if you can just recall the list where we talk about the number of the factors which cause death the accidents and the road accidents these are in the rank they rank sixth in the list which caused the deaths so setting up some preventive actions like dynamic speed limits or cautioning fellow drivers you know, that all can be done using the weather forms data so so far we spoke about our offerings in terms of the our hardware capabilities uh, this is the data wing platform which uh, we have built in house and it's fully featured uh, in addition to a standard dashboard view the cloud based application terminal which we have a custom name for uh, is loaded with modules like analytics automated reports cluster view smart notification heat maps widgets and so on now analytics can be performed by three different approaches like uh, parameter comparison where we can uh, correlate between parameters like let's say temperature humidity and particulate matter we can also compare various devices like if there's a smart city and you have deployed 50 devices and you want to correlate between different zones that is possible and also we can develop a pollution rules which will help you understand and get better sense of the data they have smart notifications where sms and push notifications can be generated using thresholds set by the customer automated reports where the system generates scheduled reports on daily weekly and monthly basis now these reports are as per the regulatory standards there are some environmental widgets where an iframe based widget can be integrated in any web platform to publish the data on a website or, or any portal and we can also generate a pollution heat map which you might you guys must have understood by now uh, in our previous slide when you have certain number of devices in a fixed area we have the capability to generate these pollution heat maps using the environmental ai now in case if uh, the end user doesn't want the terminal there are several options uh, by which the data can be accessed so ozone provides apis for integration with the customer's application also data can be published on tvs or outdoor leds mobile apps and so on uh, we can trigger the smart notifications uh, and the automated reports based on the customer's need and we are also working towards a voice activation in the future so this data accessibility you know using this pollution data one can conduct a research to establish any cor uh, correlation between the coronavirus and one can also develop any solution and application based on all these hardware and the software capabilities that we have showcased right now now let me just uh, grab your attention for some more minutes. Uh, we believe in this closed loop system where we give the data and monitor the output. Let me explain you with this help of uh, the, this graphic. The environmental data monitoring helps in data gathering, visualization and further analytics. Now, in case of uh, urban application, source prediction is carried out along with generating KPIs for different action forces to work upon. Once these KPIs are measured, we help measure the effect on pollution load and ultimately monitor this mitigation. I know this might be a little too much for you, so let me just ease out with an example. Let's say the air quality data is used by the city authorities and with advanced analytics and source tracking of possible emissions, the city authorities are empowered to further generate KPIs for departments to monitor traffic, construction and fire and so on. Now, these KPIs, when they are measured and the effect of implementation on environment is finally monitored by the data, a similar such approach can also be done for the industrial applications where uh, it is focused on data enabling automation in industries. So threshold based automation and regulated which eventually mitigate the problem. Again with an example I'll just try to help you understand. So using the data and then subsequent thresholds industries can fix the frequency and direction by automating these mist cannons for dust suppression. So such efficient working of system creates a positive impact and eventually validate uh, by our monitoring solution, which ultimately, you know, close the loop. So I hope you guys have understood what we are trying to say with this in the urban as well as the industrial applications. In case, again, you have any queries, please drop it uh, in our chat box. So 
guys we just wanted to give you a, a spark or a kickstart and leave this all for your imagination to build solutions and applications you know we being a partner first company we are committed to support you in the best possible way now in today's august gathering though virtual we have some brilliant minds amongst us i'm sure they would have already started thinking in the direction that we are trying to talk to where we are talk we are trying to work towards a sustainable future one which is prepared to tackle such untimely bio attacks and empower the mankind to rise through the ashes <clears throat> i think uh, guys we can uh, take some questions here so uh, before that we do have a poll uh, to to answer for you guys so i think we can generate this poll right now i'll give you a few seconds for you to answer this great guys uh, i hope this this whole webinar was of some context to you and uh, you have uh, got some what we were trying to say you have understood and you have correlated to the facts in this uh, scenario uh, i hope you guys are safe and you take the care of you and your family so with this i conclude today's webinar but now i'll just hand over this uh, stage to my colleague janam janam over to you Hi, Ayan. Thank you. Thank you so much for this detailed presentation. And I would also like to have a chance to thank all the attendees who were able to make it to this webinar. And thank you so much for joining us. I hope this entire webinar had given you some context, as Ayan said. And <clears throat> this is the first webinar that we've conducted at OISOM, and certainly this is the first of many. I'd like to apologize if there have been any errors. I believe there was a bit of an audio glitch in between, but we'll try to ensure that these small, small things are corrected in the future. I, if there are any questions that you know probably might not have popped up right away, but when you go back, go back to your respective work and try to think about it, and there's something that might come up to you, they're always available. You can you can reach out to either me, Ayan, or Ankit, or whoever your respective account manager is, uh, with the questions, and we'll be more than happy to assist you. I believe the presentation was was giving a in-depth or a descriptive information of how we can take actions to control and mitigate the global pandemic. That's here upon all of us, but also in addition to that, also various avenues where OISOM solutions can be offered. The webinar will be the, web, the webinar was a recorded session and it will be shared with everyone uh, shortly. And also along with that, I'd like to thank you once again. And we look forward to engaging with each and every one of you. Let's try to get on a call. Let's try to schedule a call, a meeting. Let's try to discuss and see what novel avenues we can explore together. And I'm certain together, you know, we can pass through these tough times and look forward to doing great business with everyone and great research as well uh just as an end note i would like to say that this webinar was just limited to what we are currently offering and what we think could be a potential offering but if you have some ideas and would like to you know discuss together this with monitoring and data acquisition sky is the limit there is so many things that we can do once we have significant data so i would like to emphasize on saying that sky is the limit and there are several avenues that can be explored some which have not been mentioned yet or something that you know you probably might think has a greater potential than all of this. I'd be happy to hear your ideas and jump on a call at mutual convenience. Thank you so much, everyone.